we are once again celebrating 25 years of Rotten Tomatoes. And this time we asked you, the fans, to submit your top films released in the past 25 years. So if you have a problem with this list, take it up with yourselves. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Here are the top 10 from that list that you submitted on Rotten Tomatoes Countdown. Number 10, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Ending 2002 on a high note, or I guess two high notes technically, was the second film in the trilogy after The Fellowship of the Ring. It was once again directed by Peter Jackson and based on 1954's The Two Towers, the second volume of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings novel. Among the film's storylines is the ongoing journey of Elijah Wood's Frodo and Sean Astin's Sam to destroy the One Ring. Of course, joined by the mysterious Gollum in this one, and also saving the once great King Theoden, who has fallen under a deadly spell. If I go, Theoden dies. You did not kill me. You will not kill him. <sighs> Rohan is mine. Be gone. The Two Towers was a monster hit, making nearly a billion dollars at the box office and earning six Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture, while winning two for Best Sound Editing and, of course, Best Visual Effects, clearly. I mean, it almost looks as good as the iPhone 15. Just kidding. Number nine, everything, everywhere, all at once. It's crazy to think a movie that came out not too long ago is one of the best of the last 25 years, according to our fans. So Everything Everywhere All at Once was a breakout hit of 2022, and it was written and directed by the Daniels, Quan and Sheener, who also produced a film with the Russos, Anthony and Joe. I mean, talk about a brother bromance. The sci-fi action adventure follows a Chinese-American immigrant played by Michelle Yeoh, who, while being audited by the IRS, basically discovers that she can save the world by connecting with parallel universe versions of herself. And who knew that a movie like this could put hot dogs on the map? She appears to be in a universe where everyone has hot dogs instead of fingers. I mean, it just doesn't matter how many times I see it. I'm just so... Much... <laughs> an evolutionary branch in the anatomy of the human race? Do you think they eat their fingers in that universe when they're hungry? Okay, I know that was a little weird. Let me ring it in. So the Daniels had an idea for a multi-universe related idea as far back as 2010 and they finally started writing it in 2016 with the lead role originally written for Jackie Chan. But good thing that it was reworked because Michelle Yeoh went on to win a Best Actress Oscar for her performance, one of seven Oscar wins in total for this movie. And she's just one of the many reasons this one carries an 86% audience score with people loving not only the acting, but the stunning visuals and deep powerful story too. And of course, hot dog fingers. Number eight, Parasite. I still cannot get over how compelling this film is. This socio-political satire from South Korean director Bong Joon-ho is about a poor family who schemes to become employed by a wealthy family by posing as unrelated, highly qualified individuals. As things escalate, we and the unsuspecting family learn that there's much more under the surface, like literally in their hidden basement. <laughs> Bong Joon-ho had actually been a tutor for a wealthy family in Seoul in his early 20s, and when a friend encouraged him to write a play while he was working on the film Snowpiercer, he actually leaned on those past experiences. Here's hoping his were a little less dramatic. Parasite did so well at the box office and won four Oscars, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Original Screenplay, becoming the first ever non-English language film to win Best Picture. I mean, this thing was, is historic. And while I may be obviously a bit obsessed, I will say that watching this one again is never a bad idea. 
Number seven, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Let's go back to Middle Earth because you guys clearly love it there. So this first installment in the Lord of the Rings film trilogy arrived in December of 2001, bringing with it all kinds of long-lasting things into pop culture. You know, like hobbits and a certain now-famous movie line. Dark fire will not avail you. Flame of Udun! Go back to the shadow. I always use that line when someone tries to make conversation with me in the buffet line. I'll let you guys keep that one in your back pocket. The film grossed nearly $900 million worldwide, and this is 2001 we're talking about, so it became the fifth highest grossing film ever at the time. And despite a nearly three hour runtime, it still holds a 95% audience score with viewers. I mean, talk about a crowd pleaser. Number six, The Matrix. Ah, the movie that made us all believe that we are basically in a simulation to this day. Starring the national treasure that is Keanu Reeves as a computer hacker named Neo who uncovers an evil cyber intelligence, this cyberpunk sci-fi flick turned out to be a cultural phenomenon for so many reasons. One of which being that it's just a trip. Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. There is no spoon? Then you'll see that it is not the spoon that bends. It is only yourself. I mean, I still think about this scene when I'm holding a spoon or drinking soup. The Matrix was written and directed by the Wachowskis, Lana and Lily, who also wrote and directed the 2003 sequels, The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions. Their approach to action scenes was influenced by Japanese animation, martial arts films, and Hong Kong action cinema, considering that the film also popularized a visual effect known as bullet time. You know the one. What a cool combination. And honestly, don't even get me started on the fashion inspiration that was and still is inspired by this movie to this day. I mean, when in doubt, just throw on a black trench coat and sunglasses, guaranteed coolness. Wow, I cannot believe that we are halfway there already. What five movies could possibly be better than that? Let's find out, friends. Number five, Avengers Endgame. Ah, the movie that was all movies. This marked the 22nd film in the MCU. I mean, wow. And a direct sequel to 2018's Avengers Infinity War. So in it, the Avengers that remain are trying to reverse the actions of Thanos from that previous film. And even with the big three, Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor, it ain't easy. I mean, if only they were playing a basketball game, am I right? Teeming with life knows not what it has lost, but only what it has been given. A grateful universe. Born out of blood. They'll never know it. Because you won't be alive to tell them. Endgame holds a 90% audience score with over 50 thousand ratings and thanks to the audience's money it went on to become the highest grossing film ever at the time with almost 2.8 billion dollars perhaps even more impressive is that it won the golden tomato award for best movie wide release in 2019 what an honor number four the lord of the rings the return of the king it is official audiences love the lord of the rings this threequel from 2003 includes the final confrontation between forces of good and evil, which are fighting over the future of Middle Earth. And frankly, it just has some pretty gnarly bad guys all around. You fool. No man can kill me. Die now. I am no man. Ah! 
Return of the King picked up 11 Oscar wins on 11 nominations, including Best Picture, which basically tied it with Ben-Hur and Titanic for the most Oscar wins ever. And despite being three hours and 20 minutes long, here it is as one of the all-time favorite movies of the past 25 years, proving that you can hold your pee in the theater if it's worth it. Number three, Inception. I know a lot of you are thinking, alas, a Nolan film. If that is you, get very excited. Director Christopher Nolan finally teamed up with Leonardo DiCaprio after years of trying to make it happen with the latter playing a professional thief who basically can steal information by infiltrating the subconscious of his targets. Now, along with Leo is a very strong cast that includes Marianne Cotillard, Elliot Page, Tom Hardy, Killian Murphy, and our boy Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And of course, let's not forget the other star, those amazing visual effects. No wonder that when Chris first started working on this script, movies like The Matrix, number six on this list, The 13th Floor, and Memento were influencing the ideas. Inception crushed it at the box office with over $828 million worldwide, good enough for the fourth highest grossing film of 2010. Number two, Interstellar. Nolan again. This film features really big names like Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, Matt Damon, Jessica Chastain, along with some incredible visuals. And it's set in a dystopian future where a group of astronauts travel through a wormhole in search of a new home for humanity. And let's just say it's a uh, kind of an intense mission. Brand, Copot, you're up. Case, blow the cabin oxygen through the main thrusters. We're gonna spark it. Roger that. Locked. Depressurizing. <laughs> Engines up! And get this, an under-the-radar director by the name of Steven Spielberg, maybe you've heard of him, was originally attached to the project alongside writer Jonathan Nolan. After Spielberg's departure, though, it was Jonathan who suggested bringing on his brother, Christopher Nolan, to direct the film. And to give it some street cred, a Caltech theoretical physicist and Nobel laureate in physics served as executive producer and scientific consultant, who also happened to write a tie-in book called The Science of Interstellar. You're welcome, nerds. And last but not least, number one, The Dark Knight. I mean, that is a Christopher Nolan triple whammy, which I am not surprised by since you guys actually voted Nolan best director of the last 25 years on another RT25 list. Now, this one is just one of a few movies on this list that also actually popped up on the critics picks of the past 25 years, but it's worth noting that this has the highest audience score in all of the DCEU. Along with Christian Bale as Batman, the ensemble cast includes Gary Oldman, Michael Caine, Aaron Eckhart, Morgan Freeman, Maggie Gyllenhaal, who are sometimes pretty much all forgotten about because of Heath Ledger's Oscar-winning performance as Joker. Now, this was the first major motion picture to be filmed with high-res IMAX cameras. I mean, no wonder so many people saw it in theaters. And of course, Nolan preferred to use practical effects over CGI whenever possible. It all added up to the highest grossing film of the year with over a billion dollars earned, eight Oscar noms with the win for best sound editing, and selection for the National Film Registry as just the second superhero film after 1978's Superman. I think we can all agree that The Dark Knight is number one in our hearts.
Well, friends, that is our list. Thank you for helping us put it together and for celebrating 25 years of Rotten Tomatoes. We couldn't have done it without you. I mean, truly, though, we wouldn't even have had this list. So thank you. For more on all these movies that we discussed today, be sure to hit up RottenTomatoes.com and our very special RT25 section. Thanks for checking out today's list. Until next time, I am your host, Nas Perez, and we'll see you back here for more Rotten Tomatoes Countdown.